What is going on, everyone? Uh, thanks for, for joining me tonight. I was not planning on doing a, a live stream, but I was sitting here and I was thinking about filming a video of a recap of the Comic Connect auction, talk about a few other things. And I was just like, I don't really feel like filming and editing this. So I'm just going to go live and I can talk about it live uh, because I'd had a few people post comments on some recent videos, uh, basically asking for my thoughts on the Comic Connect auction, kind of a recap of that auction, that kind of stuff. Uh, but before we get into that, I always like to show some things that I've, I've picked up recently. And I've just got a couple things here. One of them, I don't think I ever showed this in an unboxing video. Uh, I picked this up a, a few months ago, but I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, so this is this this production cell uh, from the uh, it's like the Batman and Superman series. It's from called I think it's episode like World's Finest, and it had it, this is the the second version of the Joker, not the original version of the Joker that we they had on the animated series. Uh, but you know Joker and and Harley Quinn in a production cell. I thought that was pretty cool, and it was already you know put up like this. So I mean cool colors and everything. I, I just thought this looked really cool. So that's something I picked up recently. Uh, eventually I need to get it fully framed and, you know, put it up on a wall, that kind of thing. And, uh, and yes, I see this, uh, the comment here from Maurice. I uh, hope you're well, you're going to make me stay up past my bedtime. I am not planning on this being a very long stream. Cause it's, it's, I, I'm a little tired too. You know, I was just sitting there, I was lying down watching. I, I like to watch these like, uh, mining YouTube channels, like where they're digging up crystals and that kind of stuff. And I was watching that. I was like, eh, I should just do something. I can go live. Uh, then uh, the other thing, just kind of for a comic book, if you've watched my recent uh, unboxing video, I got a bunch of really cool stuff. And this is just one of the books. I figure, you know, you don't see 90 plus Golden Age very often. So this is Blonde Phantom number 16 and a 9.2. Uh, I'm not usually a big Sid Shores fan. For his cover art but i do actually like uh, i like this cover i think this is a cool cover so uh blonde phantom number 16 9.2 i thought that was a pretty cool book i picked up recently all right and uh <laughs> yeah como yeah it's a it's a school night i mean i think a lot of kids are actually on spring break right now but um but yeah so i, I don't plan on making this one too long but i was going through the comic connect listings that i was watching so Comic Connect, you can put together a watch list. And so I had done that and I, I had been watching a lot of books for this Comic Connect auction. I I mean, got Drew in here. I had been uh, talking with him and, and uh, Mickey at Swaggo House Comics quite a bit during this last week during that Comic Connect auction because I, I bought quite a bit of stuff. And so, you know, that take that how you will, you know, with, with that auction. And we're going to get into that a little bit. And uh, Victor says, a uh, new subscriber. Thanks for, for subscribing to the channel. Really appreciate it. And so let's, you know, and if anybody has any specific books they want me to talk about, I can try to search for them. The Comic Connect search is a little, uh, it's, it's not the best searching for soul listings and that kind of thing. That's why I make such extensive watch lists for their auctions, because that is the easiest way to get back to those books and, and to find those books. Um, but we got this right here. So you can see here, 1,109 sold listings. That that is the extent of my watch list for the last few auctions that they've they've had because it just kind of keeps them in there forever. I think I was watching around 300 books or something in this auction, and this was a big auction. And that's kind of something I want to talk about a little bit. I don't think this auction was promoted as much as it probably should have been because if you actually went through like all the listings of this auction like I did. This auction was pretty nuts. This was a pretty crazy auction. I I have no idea what the total final numbers were for sales numbers, but I have to think it was somewhere between five and ten million dollars. And so I think that this was a. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, Como says he says you were either chatting with us or dropping bids. And yeah, I was I was bidding in that auction quite a bit, and I I, I bought quite a few books. And so. Now, I mean, one thing I'll comment, and I made a post about this on Instagram, like this, and here I'll uh, make myself the, this is the promotional for the Comic Connect auction. And so I had been commenting with Drew and Mickey, and I was like, I haven't seen like any advertisement for this auction. I don't think I got anything in the mail. This showed up on Saturday after the auction was done. And I made a post about that and a bunch of people said the same thing, that it showed up either Saturday or showed up Friday. 
Uh, I think some people get the earliest I think I saw was maybe Thursday, you know, and the auction was mostly done at that point. And so I just I do feel like this auction was not advertised uh, as there we go at advertised as much as it probably should have been for the quality of books that were in it. And, you know, and maybe part of it was that those were sent out late. I don't know what was going on with that. Um, but uh, here, let's see. We've got a, a comment here from uh, Cosmic Trekker. Howdy, still a great channel as always. I bought a few things off the latest Comic Connect auctions, nothing high end, but they were all PCH. There were some deals to be had. I, I totally agree. And so now it's like any auction. There were definitely strong sales in there. There were some books that went like big, some really strong sales. And there were some weak sales. There were books that sold right around what they should. But I felt like on average, this one went lower from what I was seeing from a lot of the books I was watching than what I would have expected. And I think it was a couple things. Uh, one of them, I think it was the promotion on it. I, I just I don't think enough promotion for the amount of books that were in here because it was like 600 plus listings almost per night. Now I didn't I didn't watch the original art stuff that was going like the first couple of days, so I don't know exactly how many were in those. But the other nights were like 600 plus listings a night. I was bidding at like 12:30 at night. Like it was ending super late. A, like high end books ending really late. And so I just I think there was maybe too much in this one auction. And again, combined with, I just, I don't feel like the promotion was as much as it should have been for the quality of the books because the PCH, like, like was said in there, the PCH was wild, like, because you had this, um, PA Cole or something collection, and then you had a lot of Bobby blue books. So in the Bobby blue books, a lot of them were the ECs and that Cole collection had a bunch of ECs too. So you had duplicates of books in like high grades that were going up against one another on separate days. And so I think it, it, in my opinion, it maybe overwhelmed the, uh, the immediate demand at that time uh, for that auction based on who was in the room. Now I'm not going to say there weren't strong sales because there definitely were. Now I'll, I'll say like one of the, the parts of the auction that seemed to do really well. And at first it seemed it started off a little weak, but seemed like it finished or a lot of it went pretty strong was this last day, the last day where they were selling the silver and bronze. And so that's, what's kind of surprising. Like the silver and bronze stuff actually looked like it did really, really well. Uh, and so like, for example, I mean, let's look at, let's look at this book right here. We've got this giant size X-Men number one and a nine, eight. Now I will say, I do not like these stickers, <laughs> these slabs. Like, I, I hopefully they can be removed without leaving residue, or else I'd be sending them back in to get reholdered. Like, they're just they're too big. Like, I mean, look at this. They like go over the all the label notes. Like, I mean, I I get it. Like, I know a lot of people are doing these. Like, they're trying to tag it as kind of like a, a not really a pedigree, but a collection of books that were all together. And so this is the Puget Sound collection, but it's just it's just too big. It, it, it's, it's to me, it's obnoxious on the case. And, um, but regardless of my personal opinions on that, uh, if we look at, we go over here and we look at giant size X-Men one and you see that was a nine, eight that went for, what was it like 34,500. And when you see these 15% buyers premium things here, those have already been added in. Uh, so when you're bidding, they aren't added in, but they automatically add them about like within two minutes or so, two to three minutes of the end of the auction. So since this ended a while ago, th these all are the, the final bid price. So if we go giant size X-Men one, and we look at 34,500 uh, for that book. And I mean, look at this. <laughs> look at this. Now it was white pages and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I think this 33.6, was that, I think that might've been a white page sale. No, it wasn't. That one wasn't even a white page sale. Um, so, oh, it was the 30. I think, cause I, I remember, I think I talked about that one in a separate video. I think it was this 30. Yeah, this was a white page. Went for 30,000 in December. And then we had this one here went for 34, five. And I, I mean, that is a, that is a strong, strong sale for this book, especially considering I think this one that sold earlier this year was like off white to white. I don't believe it was white pages. Yeah, it's off white to white, even though granted, I mean, you, 
you switch between these two and lighting and things can make a difference. But I think the off white to white one actually looks you know, to me, it looks better. I mean, it looks like it has a better color strike. It's a little brighter, uh, that kind of thing. But regardless, somebody paid 12,300 more for that white pages. I mean, this was a, uh, let's see here. This was a big sale, you know, and, and I, that was generally what I saw for a lot of this, you know, silver and bronze age stuff like, like this one, like this X-Men 94. Let's, let's take a look at that. I think it sold for 3000 more than a book that sold a few weeks ago. Um, so again, I think this one's white pages and, and all of that. And I know that can add some, uh, some value to it. And yeah, yeah. Appreciate the comment there. Yeah. It always helps if you hit the like button. I always, you know, really, uh, appreciate that. Uh, but if we take a look, yeah, see, look at here, nine, six last sale, $6,088. You know, and then we had a 6375, 7800, 9000. The one here on, I keep, I keep clicking on that there. Uh, the one here went for 9,430. I mean, high for the year. I mean, so there were definitely some strong sales, especially in this part of the auction. This was the last day, which you would think people might have been, might have like burned through all their money by then. But that definitely didn't seem to be the case. There were some there were some big bids going on. Now, the reason I'll say that I was a little concerned at the start was that there was an Amazing Spider-Man 1 9 and it actually had a reserve. Most of these books, you can see, they have this little thing that says no reserve. And so if there's a reserve, it has to hit a certain number for it to sell. And that one didn't sell. It did not hit its reserve. And so immediately you go like, uh oh, you know, it's like, is there not enough like money in this room or people have spent all their money already on the other books in this auction, but it definitely picked up because I mean, as you go down through here, there are in just in general, some very strong sales for these books. Uh, let's see, let me find another one that, that really jumped out like this one. I'll say like, this is a, this is a modern book. I mean, this is this star Wars clone wars book. and here, let's uh, take a close look at this one. This is the variant. And again, you can't even see the notes on it. Like, I, gosh, I, I, I do not like those stickers. Like, you can't even see the notes on it. But this is the first appearance of Ahsoka Tano. This is the variant. Um, and went for 4255 I mean, I've been seeing people struggle to sell this book on Instagram for like 3500 Like, no, nobody claiming the books at those types of prices. And then it comes on here, you know, 4,255. So, I mean, there are some, there were some definite strong sales in really like the more, like the more modern stuff, which was again, like I said, very surprising. I mean, look at this one, like the star Wars one nine, eight went for 4,255. I guarantee you that's a big sale for that book. I, I know I see that book sell enough that I just, I know that is a strong sale based on recent sales for that book. So if we look at a nine, eight star Wars, number one, I mean, last sale here, 4,000 wasn't the high for the year. Uh, let's see. So it was 4,255. So it wasn't the high for the year, but I mean, higher than a lot of these most, most recent sales, 4,000, 3,975, 3,500. This one was higher, 4,320, 3,840, 3,840, 3,840. I mean, these were strong sales for these books. Now, let, let's keep moving through the... Uh, uh, well, and so that, that's the question here. Comic book market is still bad question. You know, it, that's the question. And my, my opinion based on this auction was that, I mean, it was mixed. Like it really was mixed. I mean, these silver, bronze, and even some of those moderns actually performed really, really well. Uh, the, the golden age in the like super high-end stuff generally performed really well. I'll say the like mid to high-end, you found a lot of deals. And I like I mentioned earlier in the video, I think a big part of that was that there was too much in this one auction. And you had too many competing books where it was identical books, very similar grades with just like EC after EC after EC or Harvey after Harvey after Harvey. And I think it was just, it overwhelmed the demand in the specific auction. And so it's tough to make an uh, a assessment based on a single auction like that. But when I can get 
what I view as pretty difficult books to come across, especially like high grade ECs, that kind of thing. I'm talking like eight O's, nine O's, like you do not see those books come up very often for good prices, like below market I'm buying. And so I, I said it earlier in the video, I bought a lot in this auction. I, I was, I was definitely watching a lot of stuff. I bought a lot in this auction. Um, there were a few things I missed out on that I was bidding on that I, I mean, I wish I could have gotten, but they, they just, they went a little too strong for me. And so, I mean, definitely some strong stuff too. And we'll, we'll talk about those too. And you'll be able to see my bids because you can, you can see uh, what I bid up to on them. Uh, but uh, like this, uh, this Hulk one or Hulk 181 and a nine, six, 16,255. I mean, let's, let's just look at some of these, you know, some of those big grail books like my like bronze and 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 silver type grail books like a 96 181 we've got some recent sales here where this one was 17,975 that was a little bit of an uptick that one actually was a little weak i mean so this one 16,255 it was a white pages that one definitely on the lower side but let's take a look at what it was this is what I like to do. This is what I've really been doing with a lot of books now is I'm looking at really like 2019 to early 2020 prices before the comic boom. And this book was generally going, looks like around 15 to 16,000 in 2019, 2020. I mean, look at this, like at, at the beginning of part of 2020, that was when people were freaking out. I mean, there were some good deals to be found then as low as 9,601. Then it started to ramp up again. And this sale here, was 16,255. I mean, this is kind of, that's still a little elevated, but more or less in line with where I might expect that book to be now. So that feels at 16,255, that feels like a relatively low risk buy. Like generally, if you, and I know some people get, you know, they think like everything's going to zero. And so if I say low risk, the, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about, but whatever. So low risk buy based on, you know, price trends. And so if you look at kind of like those general price trends for this book, Kind of this low point here, 16,800, feels like around where this book should be. And so I think picking it up around 16,255, which is what this one did, you know, pretty safe pickup at that point. Now, here's here's another one. I think this one was actually a pretty solid sale. Uh, it's Hulk number two in a 9-0. Now, that is a tough, tough book in that type of grade. Uh, so if we take a look at Hulk number two in a 9-0, here we go. Okay. So it's come down some, but still well above where it was like 2018, 13,000, 2019, 15,000. You had the comic boom price, you know, 28, eight, we know we're not holding on to that. Uh, but this one went for 16,100. I'd say that's still a pretty strong sale. We're still above 2019 prices, but not too much, you know, kind of seems in line. I'd say that seems like a pretty reasonable price for that book. That one, you know, it doesn't seem like a, a big shock. It's not like, I don't see that as a low. I see that it's around where I would expect that book to go. Uh, let's see. Uh, we've got uh, Thomas Palmer here. The comic market or the, the comic won't really improve in a big way until inflation goes down, the economy improves and collectors have disposable income uh, that they had during the comic boom. I mean, it seems like people have quite a bit of disposable income based on a lot of the books that I've been seeing selling. Um, but I mean, I, I don't know. It, it does seem like there's there's quite a bit of money that went out, especially in this auction. Um, but here's, I mean, here's one. I know that this was actually a pretty strong sale as well. This Avengers number four and a nine zero, and that's what I'm talking about. I mean, there were just so many incredible books in this auction, and this uh, Puget Sound collection was just like tons and tons of really high grade silver and bronze. So if we take a look at a nine zero, I mean. Yeah, it was 12,500 last year, but that was clearly like, that was still like comic boom, almost prices. That was a record in 2023, which was pretty rare. But if we look at 2022, 7,800 to 9,300, this one went for 9,430, went for more than any sale in 2022, more than all of these types of sales. It was one of the highest sales of all time. I mean, so that was a strong sale for that book. I do feel like the silver and bronze stuff performed exceptionally well. Now, this one I want to talk about. <laughs> this this amazing spider. I think I have it over here somewhere. Let's uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay. So we have this amazing Spider-Man 129 and a 9.8. Went for 
went for $28,750. So if we've got Amazing Spider-Man 129, this, I mean, this was a, this is a pretty big sale. So 9.8, let's look at, look at some of the other sales that we've had for this book lately. And you can see last sale, 21,600. 24,000 was the other sale this year. Now, obviously there's these huge comic boom prices. Like those, we're not coming back to those, right? But look at the pre-comic boom prices. This is a $12,000 book, 12, 10. It really seemed like this book was, was trying to correct back down to these numbers. And then we have this one go for 28,750. This is on the last day of the auction. Earlier in the auction, same auction, we had one go for 18,000. Now you can tell like, now it's tough because it almost feels like there's a slightly different, like you can see a different color to the CGC label, like when you flip back and forth. So it feels like maybe there's just like a different lighting on this book. It's, it's kind of hard to say if this one is actually a better color strike than this one. It looks like it is, but when you, the thing that you know should be identical between the two is the color of the label. And you can tell the color of the label on this one is darker than this one. So in all honesty, they could be very similar. Now, one of them is white pages. One of them is off white to white. But is that is that 10 grand? Like that's that's crazy. Within the same auction, this one sold on the 19th. This one sold on the 22nd. Over $10,000, almost $11,000 difference in price. That that was crazy to me. I mean, I don't know if I would like, I mean, I would say this was a very high number. I, I think that this, this was a number that likely will not be achieved again for quite a while. I think that this book is going to be trending down more. Um, and, and I talked about that in my video I put out earlier today. Like I'm never like, I'm not trying to ever rag on someone for their purchases. I am talking about the the risk the downside risk in that purchase so the downside risk in this purchase maybe not as bad i mean still prior to the comic boom this was like 11 to twelve thousand dollar book and so i would still think this could go down to maybe like 14 14 or 15 so there is still some downside the downside to this feels way off uh, so uh, now now, Maurice says, you know, what about this, you know, the, the pedigree? This is not a pedigree. This, this is one of the things I've been talking about. This is something that, that Heritage started and now other people are doing it too, where they're basically like making like faux pedigrees. Like pedigrees are very specific things. You know, this is not a pedigree. This is a collection that someone had because pedigrees have very specific rules. Like for a pedigree, it has to be the uh, the owner was buying those books off the stand, or at least a very high percentage of the books off the stand. These ones can be, you know, the person just had a bunch of money and, and bought a whole bunch of expensive books, and then they decided to sell them, and so they just slap a sticker on it and say, this is from this collection. That That's the big difference here. So this is just this Puget Sound collection, which is not a pedigree or anything. It's not recognized by CGC or CBCS or any of that. Uh, it's just this gigantic sticker that I mentioned earlier in the video that I do not like because it completely obscures the details on the label. You know, like I just, I think it's, it's too much. Now I know it has one of these, you know, presents well for the grade stickers, but my, my personal, my personal opinion on those is I think you just kind of like send them in and you give them whatever money it takes and they put the sticker on there. Uh, because a lot of times, especially on a nine, eight, it's like what presents well for a nine, eight, it's a nine, eight you know, it's supposed to present well. So I, I just, I, I don't know. I, I don't really buy into the CVA and QES stickers all that much. That's, uh, that's me. Now, uh, question is, uh, who adds these stickers? I almost guarantee you Comic Connect added those stickers. Like in it, with Heritage, they're the ones that add the stickers, like for those collections that they sell. Like the Black Cat collection was their stickers. The Originally the Fantastic collection, they had stickers on there for that. Uh, there's a bunch of other ones that they've done. Uh, so it's generally it's the auction house that is adding those stickers. Uh, now the the QES is different. 
Uh, I think the CVA stickers, I believe it's like some type of subsidiary of Comic Link, something like that, where they have some type of affiliation. I don't know what the connection to QES is. It might be associated with Comic Connect, but I don't know. I, I don't remember the details on, on that one. But yeah, that, that's my take on the stickers. I don't put much value personally in those like CVA and QES stickers, and I wouldn't recommend others do either. I, I just, I mean, yeah, it's like it's a 9.8. It's supposed to look nice. Um all right, but so I've talked about those. You know, I, like I said, I, I think the I think the silver and the and the bronze and everything did did very well. Was was pretty strong. Now, let's get into some of the golden age because there were definitely some strong sales in gold. Age, and this is an all golden age in here. I've got golden age and silver age and and all kinds of things. These are the what I'll call like the bigger books. Like these are some of those big books that sold. And so this one, you know, like there were records out there. Like this witch's tales. Number 25, really cool pre-code horror cover. Looks like it's done by Lee Elias, but it's not done by Lee Elias. Uh, so if we go and take a look at... Okay, and, and Mark says the QES stickers are related to Comic Connect. Yeah, so that, that's right. That's I, I thought the the CVA were Comic Link and QES sounds like our Comic Connect. Um, so, I mean, that's why I say. Like, I don't put a whole lot of stock in, the, in those stickers. Um, but uh, we go to this... Uh, you know, I just want to, all right, we go to Witch's Tales, 5.5 went for 4,250. I mean, we had a 6.5 sell in November for 4,320. Last 5.5 sale in March of 22 was 3,120. I mean, this was a pretty big record for that book. A thousand, over a thousand dollars over the last sale from 2022, almost as much as the 6.5 from last year. So definitely some you know, a strong sale there for this book. And like I said, I'm trying to keep an eye on the comments too. If there's any books that anybody remembers from this auction that you specifically like me to try to look up, I'll do that too. But I've got tons of books to talk about here. Um, oh, and uh, Pinky Panther says, if you lose the sticker if you re-slab a book. That is correct. You have to, you would have to send it back and give more money to have the sticker added again uh, if you wanted to get that sticker added back onto the slab. Because it's they're not associated with CGC, like CGC isn't putting those stickers on the case. Uh, then next one here, this is the Superman number two. Now I was obviously, I was interested in this book because I just got back a uh, Superman number two. I have a 1.5 that I, that's conserved that I got back. So I was watching this one. This is a nice looking book. This is a really nice looking 5.5. This is a pretty strong sale. I, I, I thought it would go between 18 and 19. And so it went for 19,999. Uh, I was actually watching that one as the bidding was happening. And it that auction for that specific book lasted a pretty long time. Uh, it just, it kept going for a while. So we take a look. This one was a 5.5. I mean, there was a 6.0 that went for 33.6. But there's a 4.5 that was as low. The last sale, 10,200. 3.0, 9,028. Uh, we had this 6.5 for 19,800. Like this 6.0 felt like maybe a bit of an outlier. Like personally, this is the type of book where when I talk about wanting to see a confirmation sale, where I want to see a, a sale that confirms that number. Like if you look at the, the last two sales, you had 20,400, 15,600, and then all of a sudden it jumps to 33.6. Like that's too big of a, a leap in my opinion, in that period of time with no other sales justifying it that we've seen. And so I would think that book in a 6.0, more likely maybe like 20. But now we had a 5.5 that went for 19.999. And so I think that that was a, it was a solid sale for this book. And it was a good looking book. Um, not, not a shockingly high sale, but a solid sale for this one. So the next one here, this and I know who bought it. He he posted about it on Instagram. So uh, I know he watches the channel sometimes. So I know he was very excited about getting this book. He said he he had been hunting for this book for a while. This was a he, he paid a lot for it. <laughs> I'll just say that like he paid a lot for this book. You know, Silver Streak number six, four point five. This is the first appearance of the Golden Age Daredevil, and so thirty three thousand seven hundred and seventy seven. And it's a rare book. And I I talked about this in my uh, my recent video as well. Uh, so what is it? Number six, uh, where I was saying like certain books, like when they come up as rarely as they do, if somebody wants it and they've got the money, 
they're just going to pay it so they don't have to wait anymore. You know, that's definitely like a big driving factor. I mean, the last sale in the 4.5, which was the same book. I'm almost certain this was the same book. Uh, let's see here. So this one, yeah, one, two, one, three, one, four, one, zero, zero, four. Uh, oh, no, maybe not. Maybe not the same book. Nope, actually not the same book. There must have been a different one I was thinking of. So not actually the same book. But we had one sell in 2020, so four years ago, for 12000 2019, 15, 6, 2016, 15, uh, 5200 This one went for 33700 I mean, that is a big jump. I mean, that's almost triple the number in four years. And so that's a big jump for that book. We had a 1.8 that went for 7,700 earlier this year. That's like 3,500 a point. I mean, I would have thought maybe like you're going to get more per point up here. I was thinking maybe 5,000 a point, maybe 6,000. So I was thinking 22.5 to 25, somewhere in that range. And so this one, I mean, it beat my estimate. I mean, there's no doubt about it. There were a couple of people that really wanted it. And like I said, I know who won it. I know he's very happy with it. So, you know, congratulations to him on, on picking up this book. It is a tough book, clearly. You know, when you don't have any sales numbers showing up on the screen outside of these, you know, very low grades, that means it has not sold in at least two years. So that that's how, I mean, in any of these grades. And so it just, it's how long are you willing to wait for that book? And so that's, that is a big driving factor and, you know, definitely resulted in a big number for this book. So this is classic claw cover, like it says over here. And then first appearance of golden age daredevil. All right. Uh, I don't know what that used to be. Uh, so we'll, oh no, it's, it's, uh, timed out my uh, curse you comic connect. All right. So I'm, I, I don't remember what those books were then. So I'll just skip past them. Uh, so we'll go to this book here. Now, this is one that you might not be very familiar with. Let me see if it uh, timed out all my other stuff too. All right. So we'll just end up going through and we'll, we'll pull up these books again, because I've got them in my, in my listing, but we've got great comics. Number three. Now, personally, this isn't, I'm not a huge fan of this cover. Like the cover artist is, doesn't cover art doesn't really do anything for me, but this is a very popular, very in demand book for golden age collectors. Uh, and so this is this, you know, sending Hitler to hell cover. So 50 went for $23,000. And so if we take a look at that one, and I think there's like a three, five coming up in the heritage auction too. So you have another chance, you know, to, to get this book if you missed out on this one. Uh, but if we look at this, this is the one that it was the same book. Uh, so we've got this 50 that went for 15,600. And this was just back in 2022. You can see here, 27065-14006. And this one, 27065-14006. So it's the same book. Now, this is where you can see like slightly different like lighting and everything with, with how people um, uh, or how different auction houses list the books because you can tell like this feels like it's like gray, like it's like a different book there, but it's clearly not. You know, it's the same book. It's got that same tear there and everything. Um, and this one went for 23000 about two years later uh, versus this uh, this heritage sale. Actually, a little more than two years later. So, I mean, that this book has serious demand. There's definitely people out there that are that are really interested in this one. But but yeah, and uh, Cosmic uh, Track, uh, Cosmic Trekker. That, that's why I like to show some of these, because I, I know there are some of these books that if you don't like, if I don't talk about them on here or you're not actively watching like every comic link heritage, whatever auction, these books come up for sale so rarely that you will not see them. And uh, so I, I like to kind of like bring some awareness to some of these ridiculous books that are out there. Uh, but let's see, let's see if it got rid of all my other, if there's any other ones. Uh, curse you comic connect. Um, all right. Here's one. So, and then, then, like I said, then I'll, I'll, I'll go through the, uh, my saves, my saved listings. Um, but we've got suspense comics, number 11. This one is another one that just kept going. Uh, so we've got suspense 11. This is a, a really famous LB Cole cover. And 
so we go suspense comics number 11 and this was one of mine that i, I really like this cover i think it's a really cool devil cover for lb cole you can see here five five went for 6200 in december of 2022 four five went for 5675 this one went for 9198 i mean this this is a big number i mean there's definitely that demand out there still for these big kind of like you know I'll call them key LB Cole books, like the well-known books, the rare books. And, uh, and, and yeah, so definitely a, a, a strong sale for that book. And these are ones that, I mean, it's like they're strong sales, but they don't really surprise me because these books come up for sale so rarely that it just takes two people that really want it. And they're going to bid that book up. Uh, now this one, <laughs> this one I talked about in my video today. Uh, I also talked about, uh, this book on Instagram. I posted about it on Instagram. Now this comic connect auction, like this is one of the things that I feel like just, if you hadn't gone in and looked at all the listings for this auction, you wouldn't have known what was in here. This auction had almost a complete run of detect of the pre Batman detective comics, which is just so rare. And a lot of them were universal. It was just so rare to see that. And this one, you know, like detective comics, number eight, now you might, and I, I talked again, if you watch my video already, you know, I'm kind of going to say similar things. You might think like, oh, well, you know, it's detective comics, number eight, 17,000 seems reasonable. And again, this is going to come down to somebody probably just got sick of waiting, you know, like, and so there were two people that were sick of waiting. And so they just, they kept bidding on this book because they, they both really wanted it. Cause if you look at the, the last couple sales, we had a 1.5 for 3,200, a 3.0 for 5,399. And those were in 2022. Even an 8.0 five years ago went for 16,155. This went for 17,260. Now, in my video earlier today, what I was talking about with this was that while, you know, like I said, I'm not going to criticize someone for the purchase, but if you are making this purchase and you're willing to pay this much above these sales like the history for what people have generally been paying for this book you have to be prepared that if you try to resell it if you ever need to down the line you likely will not get this number and that if another one comes up in say the next six months which is very likely it was very possible that could happen and it's a similar grade like a 2-0 or maybe a 3-0 it may sell for significantly less than this because there may have been two people bidding for this now one of them has the book. The other one is going to is going to go and bid on it and they're going to get it for way less because they were the only two willing to spend this kind of money for this grade of this book. And so you just have to think about that like that's the downside risk that I talk about with these that you just have to think about. Now if you have enough money, downside risk doesn't mean anything. You know, you got 100 million dollars or 50 million dollars and your comic budget is huge and it's just like you just want the book and you don't care and it doesn't matter if you lose 10 grand. That's fine. Like, who cares? Right. But if you care at all about the potential downside risk for the books, that's what I think about with those. And that's why I think that there is a lot of downside risk to, to this purchase. But, you know, if somebody's willing to pay this, they probably aren't looking to get rid of it anytime soon. That's my guess on that one. Uh, then, uh, Chico's comic says he was bummed the Detective Comics 38 got pulled from Heritage Weekly yesterday. He was looking forward to uh, it, it was looking uh, it was looking like it was going to have a solid sale. I didn't see it until after it got pulled. So I didn't actually know what I, I don't know what, what it was sitting at. Um, but yeah, I, I, I was definitely watching those early texts. There were a bunch of early texts in that uh, in pretty affordable ones and like some key books that were in that heritage auction yesterday I actually picked up. I, I bought one of them. So, <laughs> so I did, I did buy one of those, uh, one of those early, uh, early texts that was in that heritage auction yesterday. All right. So now let's go back to this one. So now I can, I can, I'll have to go through here because it, for whatever reason, it timed out all the links that I had saved to talk about, you know, in this video. And so we can kind of scroll through these and just kind of see what some of these books sold for. And, and this is what I'm talking about with this Puget Sound collection, like some of these amazing Spider-Man books. This was an, a crazy collection. It was basically like the lowest grade they were willing to buy was a 9-0. And so the ASM-1 started at a 9-0 and everything from there was like 9.0 for like the first like 20 or so issues. Then it went up to 9.2, then 9.4, 9.5, 9.6, 9.7, 9.8, 9.9, 9.10, 9.11, 9.12, 9.13, 9.14, 9.15, 9.16, 9.17, 9.18,
you know, the nine, six, that kind of thing. And it just kept climbing. Like it was a, Oh, you picked up the tech 58. Congratulations. Yeah. That, I mean, yeah, that just an example. Yeah. That first, uh, first penguin was one of the books that was in there. Um, and so, you know, like nine, no amazing Spider-Man 14, nine, no amazing Spider-Man four, nine, no of the molten man. I mean, and then as you, you know, as you go up to the, the newer issues, you can see it was like nine, two for the 50, nine, four for the 121, And it just kind of went up from there. Really cool collection to see all these books come up for sale. I mean, some of them, I would say some of them went a little low, but still pretty solid sales for these books, especially considering it was the final day. Um, but so yeah, it was cool to see all those and you'll be able to see some of the books I ended up, you know, I'll try to go buy them quick that I ended up buying. Cause I, uh, uh, I want to talk about those in an unboxing video, you know, later as well. Um, but see here, like, this is what I'm talking about with the PCH though. Like here was another witch's tales that came up for sale. This is a 5.0, the one for 3565. And this happened a lot in this auction. There were a lot of competing golden age books, which does not happen normally in auctions. You rarely have the, ex the same book in the same auction for golden age. And this auction had it time and time again. And so that when that happens, you need a lot of people that are willing to bid on them. And I, I just feel like maybe there was just a little too much volume in this auction I, I probably would have like either not had the bobby blue in this one or not had the pa cole in this one or, or something i i probably would have pulled it back some stretched it out a little bit more where you had maybe 400 selling a night instead of 600 i think it was just i think it was a little too much all at once in this uh, in this auction but yeah again like just some really cool stuff uh now let's get down like this this is an example of one that was really cool to see this is this, uh, there were a bunch of file copies, like a bunch of gains file copies. And, and, and no, I, I don't think there anybody's dumping books in fear of a, a crash. I mean, there are always auctions, right? Like there's always auctions and people are always selling. And so I just, I, I don't, I don't see it as people dumping books. Um, I, I think people have certain narratives they want to push. And so they want to try to say like things are crashing or things are whatever. And so they'll say that, but I, I don't feel that. Um, but I mean, Weird Fantasy number 20, signed by Feldstein and a gold label. I, I know there are not many gold label Feldstein uh, Feldstein signatures, um, but 9.6, just crazy. This one, I thought it was going to go a lot lower. I thought I might bid on this one. <laughs> this, this book went huge. I mean, $7,130. I mean, let's take a look at that one. We have Weird Fantasy number 20. And... Let's see here. So this was a nine, six. Now I know it's signed, but still let's look at a nine, six. We had a nine, eight file copy in 2020 go for 6,400. This one went for 7,130 as a nine, six. And I mean, so the, and there hasn't, obviously there hasn't been a gains file copy that sold since 2007 here, went for 1,350. This one went for multiple times that. And so, yeah, I mean, this, I've noticed like file copies, the gains file copies have been getting some very serious numbers. Like those books have been getting a lot of attention uh, lately. Uh, but let's keep keep scrolling down and you can see I, a couple books on there that I that I ended up winning. Now, this was also cool to see. There was almost, again, like a full run of suspense. They did not have suspense comics number three, like the biggest of them. But they had, I think, everything else or close to it. And some of these got some big numbers like this suspense comics number five and an eight Oh, I'm going to take a look at that one. And so we've got suspense comics number five in an eight Oh, I don't know how often that's going to sell, but so we had a seven Oh went for 5,280 feels a little high, but we had this uh, five, five went for 2280. This one was a eight Oh that went for 5,060. So I do think that that's, that is a solid sale. Given the Promise Collection, eight O went for four thousand six hundred and eighty in twenty twenty one. Like this sale, the fifty two eighty feels on the high side to me. Given that Promise Collection sale, and so this one actually feels like a pretty strong sale for this book. And I saw that with a lot of like I, we already talked about the Suspense Eleven. We have the Suspense Three, the cool uh, LB Cole Spider Skull cover if you haven't seen this one before this is a lot of people like this one more than 
Startling Terror Tales number 11, which is the uh, the later one. It's kind of like a ramped up violent, more violent Spider Skull cover. And uh, but 4,372 for that book, which was a, a very solid sale for that book. Then we go down into some uh, some tales from the crypt. We got more suspense. This is what I was talking about here. Like you don't see runs of this book. This is such a difficult run. And to see all these together is just crazy. Then we had some some Submariner. We had you know a lot of timely stuff that was in here. This one, I'll say like this book surprised me. This Spirit number 22. Now, I, I love this cover. This was one of my keeper books for a while. I think this is such a great cover. It's a Will Eisner cover. The reason I was surprised that this one did as well as it did is this feel, this is, it's either faded or a bad color strike. Um, that's one of the big things with this book. This happens a lot on this one. If it's been in the light or anything like this book seems to fade pretty easily. And so I'll, I'll show you what a, a non faded copy looks like, or you can go to my Instagram and you can see one. Cause I had, I have one posted on there too. Um, but we've got spirit number 22. And so this one went for 5,290 for a five, five. I mean, look at this. That was actually the record in grade. I mean, the last sale 2022 is 4,080. So this was, this went for more than this 6.0 last year. Uh, we had a 3.5 for 2760, but let's look at say this like 9.2. So you can see like a, a really high grade copy of this book. So we had this, this is what the colors look like normally. Like this is what the original colors look like. This is what this one looks like. Like it clearly sun faded, you know, it's clearly a sun faded copy. I don't think that's color strike. I think that that's sun fading. And so just extremely different. So I was actually expecting this one to have like a pretty weak sale. Like I thought this one might go for something like, I mean, even like 3000, you know, maybe a little over the three, five, but this is one of those examples, you know, I've talked about, you know, buy the book, not the grade. And, uh, and how I, I kind of joke about that because nobody really does it. Like everybody just buys the grade or most people just buy the grade. This is buying the grade. Like that's what that is because this is the color strike you want to look for with this book. And yeah, this is a nine, two, all that, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, but you can find lower grade. Like I had, I had a three, five and my color strike was almost identical to this. It was a beautiful color strike. It doesn't have to be a nine, two to have a great color strike. It just meant that mine had, you know, some creasing on it and that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, that's why that one, that book really shocked me on, on that price. Now, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, so let's see this comment here. This is exactly why I was watching this Richie Rich book, because I wanted to see what this book would go for, because I always joke about, about Richie Rich number one. You know, it's not his first appearance, you know, but for whatever reason, this book still goes for huge money, especially the 9.6, I think it's 9.6. Uh, that sold a couple times on Heritage. One of them went over a hundred grand. Second one went for like ninety. Uh, I don't actually know how this sale did, but we can we can take a look. So Richie Rich, number one, and so we'll see how that four point five, you know, how that four point five did. Uh, so this was five thousand one hundred and sixty one for four five. Seems kind of in line. You know, we have a 3.0 for 9.57, 3.5 for 8.62, 4.0 for 40, uh, 14.50, and a 5.0 for 22.22. This went for 15.61. I mean, it went between the 4.0 and the 5.0. I mean, I, I'd say that's basically in line. You know, Richie Rich you know, still connects with rich people. They still want to buy this book. Um, I, I don't, I, I mean, I get it, but I also don't get it. Like, to me, it's kind of like a, kind of like a, a dead spec you know <laughs> like if you want to call it spec or whatever and so it's one of those where like when you're talking about older characters people clearly still connect with like superman and batman and green lantern and and that kind of thing like the characters that are carried through to today but richie rich really isn't carried through to today so that's the type of thing where you have characters like the black terror fighting yank you know where it's like yeah it's like People recognize certain Schomburg covers, but you're not really buying that character. You're more buying the, the cover content when you're buying those types of books. At least, you know, in my opinion. Uh, so we had some other spirit books. Now, there was also a full run. 
it'd be pretty amazing if Richie Rich was in Deadpool three. Like if he's if he's killing off everybody, he goes after Richie Rich. I mean, I I mean, I'm going to see that movie anyway. But I'd see it also for that. But I believe there's also a full run of Phantom Lady. Um, and so th there were some crazy high grades. But the big one was Phantom Lady number 17. Clearly, like that is the big book in this run. It's a five, five cream to pink pages. So uh, this, if you're not familiar, uh, Fox Feature Syndicate, uh, they used pink paper in a lot of their books. And so it's because it's cheaper because it didn't, it's like, it didn't have to go through that full like bleaching process to get the white pages, at least from what I understand to get down to the white paper. So they could use this pink paper and save some money. Uh, but actually in these books, like the pink pages have actually become very collectible. Like people really want to get pink page copies. Uh, but this is a five, five went for 55,200. I had it going for about 50. Uh, I think I can't remember my exact number. I think I had it going for around 50. And so this, I mean, this was a strong sale, but it was, this was not a shocking sale to me, but this was a big sale. So if we look at Phantom Lady number 17, and you can see when you compare it to other sales, you might think it was like a shockingly high sale, like the 70 last year going for 57, six, six, five going for 33, but it's just that we've been seeing these like lower grades creep up and up and up. And so, and then we, obviously we had the big promise collection, $456,000 sale, which I don't know if that would repeat itself today. I, I'd be interested to see if that book came up again, would it go lower or would it actually hit that number again? I, I feel like it wouldn't, um, but I'm, I'm not sure. But like I said, I, I would have like, if I was bidding on that, I would have been happy getting that book at 50,000. And, you know, so it went for 55. So it was a solid sale, but uh, it still, to me, was not just, it just wasn't a shocking sale. Like, I, I feel like this book has become one of just the most marquee non-hero type books out there. It's, it's, it's the most well-known book for Matt Baker. And, and I know that a lot of people think it's kind of like maybe a joint cover. There could have been other artists that also participated in this cover. Uh, but most well-known cover for Matt Baker, and it seems unstoppable in terms of, of price increases. And, and yes, I, I am aware that Richie Rich had a Saturday morning cartoon and Macaulay Culkin did a, a version in the 90s, but 90s were a long time ago. I, I mean, I know people like they talk about, they're like, oh, I'm, it's one of those things I, of, I often like to mention with with like comics like collecting people are like i got that book for 50 dollars back in 1992 and you're like that was the 32 years ago <laughs> so it's like that was not recently uh and neither was richie rich um <laughs> so that's just that's my that's my take on uh on on that kind of that kind of stuff um but you know let's let's keep scrolling through these Again, like I said, there's like this full run of Phantom Lady, some really great books. Like, I mean, eight, five, six, five, seven, five, six, five, just grades you do not see with these books. Uh, then we had a mask one and a mask two. The mask one, the cool thing about this one, and if you saw my recent unboxing video, I picked up a mask one, a 3 0. So I bought a 3 0. This is a one five that went for 8,280. This one, the the kind of like extra cool thing about this one is that this is also a double cover. I don't know. I, I don't know how, how often that happens with mask. This might be the only double cover for mask one that actually exists. And so both are 1.5s. So at least, you know, it's not like the better covers on the inside or, you know, that kind of thing. They're both 1.5s. Colors look pretty solid. It's light tanned off white pages, you know, totally fine. Like, I don't even care. Like I've said before, I, golden age, I don't care about page quality. And, uh, but I mean, a good look in 1.5. I, I don't, let's see. It says the, I think it says the first cover is detached and but overall i mean yeah it's got like some staining and that kind of stuff that's on the back like who cares good looking book i, I thought i saw the person that bought this on instagram too i'm pretty sure they posted about it because i think they had a 1.5 mask 2 as well and they said you know they're going to look great next to each other but i just i love this cover i think it's such a great looking cover um i, I mean here's i know some people really like the devil cover mask 2 more uh, me personally, this, this one, I just, I just like this one more. There's just something about it. I like it a lot more. Uh, but that's, that's my opinion. All right. So I saw someone in there said that they bought the, somebody say they bought the Melville mystery 58. I was, I, I don't know if I was watching that one or not. Um, but yeah, no, congratulations on, on picking up a Marvel mystery. I love the Marvel mystery run. 
Uh, I was specifically watching this book because I, I do have one for sale. I have a 4.5 for sale. Uh, it was on my keeper list for a while, but I finally decided to, to cut it. But this is my favorite Schomburg, like World War II propaganda cover. You know, and I, and now definitely the one that's the most impactful, the most historically important is the uh, the Captain America cover with the in the concentration camp. But in terms of just like pure insanity on the cover, this one is my is my favorite. It's got the crazy like contraption to crush the uh, to crush Toro and, and the woman. Uh, you've got the all the Nazi stuff on the cover you've got human torch busting through the wall which i just i love seeing that him him breaking through the wall i remember when i first got into really buying golden age books i was talking to one of my buddies and i was i was telling him that i whatever happens like i'm like when i was getting this i'm like i'm gonna own a human torch schomburg cover where he's melting through a wall i just i love the way it looks and i've, I've owned a few now since then and, uh, but yeah, that's one of the things I just, I always like to see that if I'm buying a human torch Schomburg cover, I want to see him like melting through a wall. I think it just always looks so cool. Uh, but this one just has everything. It's such a great cover. Um, all right. So I, so I want to check back in the comments real quick. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to go after baby Huey next. Yeah. I'm just, I'm going after all the old classics, uh, all the old classics in here. Um, now. I mean, here's where, again, we've just got, and I, here I, here's one you can see where I got outbid. You know, I was going after one of these, there were Gaines Files copies and I was trying to get like, I was hoping to get a Gaines file copy. I did get one. I did get one out of this. Um, I did not win this one though. Uh, but then we've got some of the Silver Age, you know, big Silver Age stuff. Let's check out how, the, how this Hulk one did. So I'm not just talking about Golden Age. I know people get bored when I just talk about Golden Age stuff. Uh, so let's talk about this Hulk one. Let's see how that one did. So we've got, Hulk number one. This is a book. I would like to own a Hulk one at some point. I have never owned a Hulk one before. I like this cover. I, I, I like the dark background covers, like black background covers. I think that's what real, I really like about Hulk number one. Um, but let's take a look. This one was what a three Oh went for 13,800. And so we go down to the three Oh 15,600. The low last year was 12.7. So it wasn't the low. Uh, if we look at where this book was prior to the comic boom, it was around 9,000, you know, anywhere. It looks like anywhere from about nine to 12. And so this sale here, 13.8, I'd say it's a decent sale. You know, I, I feel like that's, I'd say that's kind of in line. I, I still think it's a little high. I think actually this low sale, this 12.7 is around where I'd probably value that book or where I think the book will trend down to. Um, given recent sales, I feel like it could still stay up a little bit, but I could see this one trending down still a little bit more. But this is a pretty good looking 3.0. It's got, you know, a little piece out of the top there, but generally pretty solid looking through. I mean, it looks like a three, but no, no huge creases through Hulk or anything like that. I think it's a, it's a good looking book. And I saw someone comment here that they they uh, outbid me on the Hanafir 27. I'll find out if you outbid me on some other things too then because I, I, I bid on a lot of stuff in this auction. Um, I won some too. Like here, here's the, I mean, so like, I'll, and I'll show it when I unbox it. Here's the the file copy I won. I won the Hanafir 20 uh, gains file copy. Um, and then I won this one, which is one of the coolest. Like this, this is a white pages eight. Like this book I felt like went for a total steal. I mean, I just feel like I stole this book. I mean, an 80 white pages, Hanafir 19, one of the most iconic covers from this run, the double head chop cover. And uh, so I am, I was, I was pretty psyched to win, uh, to win that one. Um, but let's, uh, let's keep scrolling down. Let's see if I can find the one that I don't remember where it was. Oh, now here, here we get into some of these texts. So you can get an idea of these like early texts that sold. And so it's like, here's that eight. And it's so, it's so much later. Like this, this one, I was talking to someone about this, about this tech number eight. And I stepped away from the auction. I watched like some like 30 minute YouTube video on something else. I don't remember if it was a comic thing or, you know, gem mining. One of these things I watched, and I came back, this book was still going like this book went for so long. And that's why it had such a huge number. Two people were just fighting it out forever. 
Um, but if we scroll down and we start to see like, I mean, just so many early detective comics, just a lot of them that are here, you know, the, the ones that you have Batman in, but if you keep scrolling down here, you start to get to the ones that were the pre Batman. We have tech 16, 12, and here, I mean, it's a 12, like a 4.5 universal, like universals are tough. Like there's even restores are tough to come across. Like anything is tough in pre Batman. Um, but then we go, we keep going back here and you can see there's a 25 and 19. Uh, there was 23, 20, 22, 14, 15, 13, 11. I mean, this was crazy. Like it was crazy seeing these. And this is the kind of thing that I, I was just, I was surprised. I didn't feel like this type of thing was advertised enough because you don't ever see this. <laughs> I mean, you really don't, you don't ever see this kind of thing where you have this many pre Batman texts all at once. Like this is an incredible collection. I'm sure this is all one person, like one person that had put all this together and just incredible to see all these. And a lot of them were universal. I mean, yeah, there were a couple restored books, but a lot of these were universal books. I mean, 10, nine, seven, six, five. I mean, it was just, it was crazy. And so, I mean, if you hadn't seen these before, like, I mean, I recommend going and checking them out. And it's why, it's why I, I go and try to watch as many auctions as I can. You just, you never know what's going to pop up in some of these auctions and there can be some super rare stuff. I remember when I was just scrolling through these, I, I thought I'd maybe just see a couple, like it's the type of thing that at a big auction, you might see one or two pre Batman texts. This was like 20 of them. It was just crazy. And uh, I honestly, like, I don't, I don't buy into that. <laughs> the, uh, I, I don't buy into that at all. The, the recession is coming because of that. Um, I, I just, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't buy into that, uh, into that theory, but I, cause honestly, like my opinion on it, there's always, and I talked about this earlier in the video, there's always auctions happening. There's always books being sold. There's always cool stuff being sold. You can always make the, you know, make, try to make an argument that, oh, people are selling because something is dropping. Well, what was happening in 2020 or 2021 and 2022, things were jumping and people were selling too. So, I mean, I don't know. That's just, that's kind of my, my take on it. But this one, this is a cool, and this is that book that Mickey, uh, Mickey had, has a copy of, you know, Chamber of Chills number 21 kind of the uh, skeleton working at the working at the the typewriter but let's see what were some cool ones that sold around here we had this chamber of chills 19 and 80 pretty incredible copy sold for 35,000 here we had now there were a couple af15s one of them went strong one of them i thought went kind of on the weak side this one went on the weaker side this was the the 4.5 there was a 5.5 that i felt had a pretty solid sale so the 4.5 went for 36,800. Uh, so if we do amazing fantasy number 15 and we take a look at a 4.5, I feel like this has got to be one of the lower sales in recent history for that book. So 4.5, yeah, you can see in January 40, uh, 40,800. Low sale in 2023 was 34,800. What was this one? This is 36.8. So it wasn't the low but it was one of the lower sales for this book in kind of like we'll say recent memory uh so we had december 43 2 36 45 40,800 you know that kind of thing i mean pre boom this book was looks like i mean anywhere from 28 to 37 so maybe like you'd say like a $30,000 book pre boom and now it's up at 36 like that feels like a pretty safe buy to me. And I, I've been saying that with AF15. Like it all depends on the grade. Um, but if you kind of look at the general trend for Amazing Fantasy 15, it pretty consistently, when you average it out over decades, you know, the last 20 years, pretty consistently goes up. I, I did it in a video once. I think it's like 11 or 12% per year if you average it out. Like clearly you have big spikes, then it goes flat for a little bit. Then you have some spikes, it goes flat for a little bit. Uh, but I feel like, that seems like that was a pretty good buy and it's a good looking book. It's a good looking 4.5. There's no big creases or anything. I don't really see any drawing. I mean, I can't remember where there's somebody. I can't tell if somebody filled in the eyes. I don't think so. It doesn't really look like it might look like something, but I don't think so. So yeah, I mean, a pretty good looking 4.5, no Marvel chipping. The thing people always complain about with that book. So I, I, I think that was a good pickup. 
Uh, but let's keep let's keep scrolling down. And if I see something in the comments, um, let me know and I'll, I'll stop and I can talk about that book. Here's that Witch's Tales that I talked about before the the five point five. Um, then it's oh this was cool. I I bid on this one. I don't normally buy, bid on these bound volumes, but I just thought this was cool. I, I've been seeing this on Heritage. I've talked about this quite a bit. Where on Heritage, I have seen these bound volumes coming up a lot lately. I it's I used to see them occasionally, but it's like somebody had a bound volume collection and they've been kind of slowly letting them go. And they've been getting some really serious numbers. And so I just thought that this was a pretty cool one because it's a golden age bound volume. I mean, this is from January to December of 1946, issue 64 to 75. So 12 issues. And this one is also signed by Carl Barks. It's pretty cool. If you're not familiar with Carl Barks, he's like the one that gave us the Donald Duck that we know today. And so it, like, and this is a nice bound volume. Sometimes they're super beat up. They've just been wrecked over time. And this is a really nice looking bound volume. You know, this is 1946. You've got this uh, little signature or certification of a certificate of authenticity uh, where it was Carl Barks, you know, signing on the interior. I just, let's see if we can see it closer. Yeah. So it says it was like two Malcolm Carl Barks, uh, 1974 or 1972. Actually, who was it? It was, yeah, this one was made to Malcolm Willits, who was like a, I looked him up. I think he was kind of like a, director of some sort is some something involved with uh with kind of like media um but a big collector and it even says in his bio he like really liked carl barks um but so yeah pretty cool book and i just thought that i don't know i, I thought that this went for a pretty good price i i had bought a lot of stuff so I, just, I didn't feel like i kept i was trying to dial back some of my bidding but i think the person who picked this up actually got it for a pretty good price um i, I would have valued this probably close to at least like 1200 and I think they picked that up for, for a pretty solid price for a cool bound volume. Um, I do like that one. All right. Uh, so then we keep keep scrolling down here. Here's this awesome LB Cole cover, you know, the thrilling crime. Then we had some uh, TMNT, some pretty big TMNT books. We had issue four, issue two. I think we, there, was there an issue three? I don't remember if there was an issue three. Um, but we had an issue one, a nine, eight first print signed. So this one was signed by Kevin Eastman. You know, it's not signed by Peter Laird. It's a recent signature, um, but a nine, eight went for 120,000. Now this is a book that has been correcting a lot. Let's see. Teenage mutant number one. It's been correcting a lot, but, um, I don't know how much more it's going to keep. I think it's going to keep going down some. Uh, so we can see here like unsigned. So we'll talk about unsigned copies. So last sale unsigned was 132, which I actually felt like was a pretty strong sale. Um, it, like we had in 2023, we had $120,000 sale. Like you can see how much this book is still up. I mean, you jump back to 2018, this was a 30,000, like $35,000 book. So six years later, it's, four times as much, you know, a little less than that, three and three and change. And so it is still up a lot. That feels to me like there's some downside risk to this. I could see it dropping below a hundred. I could definitely see it dropping below a hundred. Uh, if we look at signed copies, just cause obviously this one was signed. Uh, looks like there isn't a nine, eight signed. There's one that's a nine, eight blue label signed. Um, so when it's blue label, people ask about that. How can you get a blue label with a signed book? It means it was signed on the interior. And so we actually, this looks like this is probably a heritage sale. So, oh, no, Comic Connect. And so here you can see Kevin, uh, Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird written on interior cover and pen. And so if it's on the interior, you can still get the blue label nine, eight. Uh, so it's kind of hard to make those comparisons. Like a lot of times they get the same bump in value with these because people know they were signed by them at, at that time. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not surprised by that sale that I actually thought it was going to go a little lower. I mean, this feels like a book that's been gradually still trending down. I thought it might go around 110. So I think 120 was actually a pretty, pretty strong sale for that book. Uh, then we had, you know, the nine, eight of issue number two went for 1860. 
I'd say that's about what it's worth. I've been seeing people try to sell that book for around two grand and not getting any action on it on like Instagram and that kind of thing. Not really any interest. Um, and so that feels like about right to me. Uh, Derek says heritage signature has ASM bound volumes issues one to 16, 17 to 32, 33 to 48, 49 to 64. Uh, the ultimate reader copy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, they've, they've had some really cool uh, bound volumes lately. Uh, it's not really my thing, but just every once in a while, they 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 catch my interest a little bit. Uh, then we had we had another first print, a 9-0 that went for 17,710. Uh, we had some uh, first Ant-Man. This is definitely a book that's been, it's been correcting some. I mean, let's take a look at that because I, I haven't been keeping up on on some of those Silver Age Silver Age books. So, uh, Tales to Astonish, number twenty seven. So it's it's useful to me too to you know check out some of these prices on these. So we had a five five go for forty four twenty six and a five o go for thirty nine fifty. So if we go down to the five five last sale five thousand and forty, this one was forty four twenty six. Uh, so this is actually the low sale since 2017. Um, so definitely, you know, a book that is correcting, you know, I would say. Uh, then we had the 5 went for 39, what was that? 39.70 or 39.50. And so a 5 5280, but that was over, that was like a year ago. Uh, so that's back to around 2019 to 2020 prices. So I would say risk on these feels pretty low. Like those feel like they've, and I feel like a lot of people didn't really like that Ant-Man movie. And so it caused things to kind of really correct with that book. And so I, I feel like that's when you really, if you've been looking for things, that's what to look for. You know, if people are going to let the movie allow the book to overcorrect, then maybe that's when you should really go paying it, pay attention to it and, and try to pick it up. So it feels like reasonable buys. For, for those doesn't seem like a lot of risk there all right then we had and here's what i'm talking about just so much ec i think these are all bobby blue books but just so much ec here's that superman number two uh just some kind of like archie type books that i was watching here's one the superman number one i think some people thought this was a weak sale i actually thought this went for around what i thought it would or maybe it was even on the strong side so here's a superman number one it's a one oh but man, it is, it is on the edge of one Oh, I, I feel like if you sent that book in a second time, I don't even think you got a 50% shot at hitting a one Oh again. It, it looks like a, a 0.5 to me. I mean, you look at this back cover, this is missing a substantial amount of this back cover. CGC usually will give this book a, uh, a 0.5. Um, now, if this was on the front, 100%, they'd give it a 0.5. There's no question in my mind. Um, on the back, you know, I know they can be a little more lenient on the back, but I, I think that this is a 50-50 shot at best that if you resub this book, that you're getting a 1.0 again, that that you might get a 0.5. Now, maybe they recognize it or something and they, you know, they give it the same grade so they don't get, you know, the, the mix of results. But, uh, but let's go down to a 1.0. So you can see this, you know, last one, that's complete one which is technically complete. I, I don't think there were any like notes on the label for this one. Yeah, just like the, the covers detached. So, uh, so last complete one oh went for 101,000 in 2023. We had 108. I think this, this incomplete one is extremely nice. I don't remember for sure. Yeah, this is this stunning copy that I think it has like a coupon clipped. Spine of cover complete. Yeah. Coupon cut out of 17th page does not affect story, but this is like, this is a stunning copy of issue number one. And so this is like, this is a beautiful one. Oh, this is one. I kind of get the CVA sticker on this one. You know, it's like, it's not like this is a nine, eight and saying it's a nice looking nine, eight. This is a, a one Oh, and this is a stunning one. Oh, this is a one Oh that makes people wonder like when they see a one Oh that looks like an actual one Oh that's all beat up and they go, you know, like, Oh, this is what a one Oh is supposed to look like. No. Like this is not what a one Oh looks like normally. It's just like there are certain flaws like the split spine, that kind of thing that, that really knocked it down. And yes, generally it, it's supposed to be a third or more, the cover missing. Now I, I have always thought that that's either front or back. And to me, that looks like a third or more. Um, so that's why I feel like this one, 
I mean, this, this lineup here is, I mean, maybe they measured out the square inches, you know, and they like, they, they actually checked it to that level. And I feel like you should, if you're grading a Superman number one, I mean, if this is a hundred ish thousand dollar book and they're charging 4% of value, you paid four grand to get this book graded. They should, you know, maybe put that amount of effort into it. I don't know. Um, but I mean, this one, I mean, we have 108, we have 101. I think they, we had some big sales during the comic boom. We had 141, 137. And so I think people probably thought maybe it would go around a hundred, but I, I was thinking 90 or lower. Like I, I, I wouldn't have been surprised if it went below 90. And I think it was sitting, I, I think I watched this one sell live and it, it got a few bids to, to get it up to that point. Um, but I thought it was going to go, I wouldn't have been shocked if it went lower. Um, I mean, the front cover looks decent. It looks good for a 1.0. I won't say it doesn't. I mean, it's got a huge tear across the front, but the back cover of Superman number one is so cool. Like it's such a cool back cover that I do think that that is a big negative for that, that book to have that type of damage on the back. So I wouldn't have been surprised if it went a little bit lower. Um, so <laughs> you know somebody tore off that piece to blow their nose or something yeah it, it's possible or to like take a note you know i would like considering that 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 back cover is like so much like clear space like i wouldn't be surprised if somebody had like torn off a piece to like write a note like for the grocery store or like for their you know their spouse or whatever or for the kids you know they're like oh just you know tear that piece off that book and write the note on there um now here's another one that you uh, you don't see very often. I think I posted about this one on Instagram too. Now, this is this I, the thing I posted about on Instagram with this one is that you can really like it is the craziest mix of cover title and content. Where you've got something where it's like this jokey title, Roly Poly Comics. Then you have this woman's head on a fence, and this guy saying "Gore blimey, it's a bleeding head." Um, <laughs> so it's like, it's kind of like a joke too. I mean, it's just, it's wild. Like this is a wild cover went for 11,141. So what's the issue? Bleeding or uh, roly <laughs> bleeding, uh, roly poly number 14. I mean, this is another one of those that just does not come up for sale. Um, so 1946, you know, pretty early, but not, it's not a world war two book, but Look at this. I mean, no sales recorded in the last two years, like no sale that's on record here. So the most recent one was a 3.0 that went for 6,600. This was a 4.0 that went for 11,141. I mean, to me, that feels like a really strong sale. Like, a, I mean, that is a solid sale for this book. Now, again, this is the type of book that someone looks at this page and they go, okay, I had one shot at a 3.0 three years ago. It was a 0.5 four years ago. There was a 6.5 six years ago. It's like, how long am I really willing to wait to get this book? And the person just goes, I'm, you know, you have two people that go, I'm not willing to wait. And so they, they bid on it and you get a really solid sale for that book. And it's, that's why those, they aren't shocking, but like, that's how those things can happen. I, I think a lot of times people like, I, I, sometimes people like they, they jump to that. They think it's like, chill bidding and, and this kind of stuff. And while I'm sure that kind of thing does happen out there, I'm sure it happens, but uh, I also think most of the time it's just two people that really want a book. And with this kind of stuff, they come up so rarely, it, it doesn't surprise me when they get some big numbers and Hey, MJ comics. Yeah. Thank, uh, thanks for joining the, uh, joining the chat. And uh, yes, that, that is a messed up cover. <laughs> <laughs> it is a pretty messed up cover. Uh, and I think somebody said uh, that it's actually, maybe they've got it in the description. I don't know. Uh, no, they don't. Uh, that it's act somebody, when I, I posted about this on Instagram, they said that it's actually from, I believe, an interior page of Pep Comics. Uh, one of the, you know, the Archie type book. Like Pep Comics had, it had more than just Archie early on, like in the 40s. It had uh, World War II stuff and all kinds of things. But um, but I think they said it's from an interior, it's like a, it's a, a page from an interior page, uh, or a recreation of an interior page from a pep comics book. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, all right, let's, uh, let's keep going down. Uh, oh, you'll see, you'll see one. I bought, I bought this shock suspense six. Um, 
this book always goes for pretty big money. This Army at War, number 83. Uh, so this is this uh, first appearance of Sergeant Rock. This book, if you ever see this one, this thing always goes for a lot. It is an expensive book in every grade. And here's Pep Comics. And so you can see, like at this point here, it was uh, Archie on the cover. And uh, we'll keep going down here. I mean, yeah, just more cool pre-code horror stuff. We have this, uh, this uh, actually picked up a copy of this one recently. Uh, I haven't done the uh, unboxing for it yet, but Mr. Mystery number 11. This is a uh, classic Bernard Bailey cover. He does some wild stuff. <laughs> like Bernard Bailey, that guy has a crazy imagination and he ha he makes the best facial expression and eye type covers. Like people's eyes, just the faces, just the, the expressions they make in these horror covers are just wild. Uh, but Mr. Mystery number 11, this one, I mean, this was basically what I would expect this book to go for 8,510. Uh, this is an expensive book. Um, let's see. So uh, we've got, this was a, I'll close that one. This was a 6.5. Yeah, I mean, we had a 6.0 that went for 7,800 last year. This one went for 8,510. I mean, then 3.5 went for 1827, which feels like a steal. Uh, but yeah, it just in general, I feel like this is this is becoming one of the most desirable pre-code horror books. It's becoming a very desirable pre-code horror book. And uh, I think that that was a it was a, a sale that I would expect, you know, somewhere between eight and nine thousand is where I thought this book would go. Uh, I've got a comment here. What do I think about Looney Tunes number one? Um, so. I've tried to buy it uh, on a couple occasions. Um, I have never managed to uh, to own a copy, um, but it, it isn't one that comes up very often. I think I bid on this one. I feel like I did. <laughs> like the 7, 5, 15, 6. Uh, I'm pretty sure I bid on this copy. I, I don't remember for sure. You'll be able to see if I did. Uh, no, maybe I, yeah, it looks like I didn't. I thought I bid on this one. Um, but uh, so we had a 7, 5, went for 15,600. I, I mean, Looney Tunes comics are very similar to disney i mean they, they are going to have a lot of fans out there i think they're relatively safe but you do also have to be they're not books that tend to move real quick i mean that's kind of my thought on them it's the same with disney books they don't move real quick um but they're cool books to see i mean it's 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 a very rare book I mean, you can see here uh, we've got one two three four sales in the last two years like you do not see this book come up for sale very often. If you get the opportunity to pick one up at a, a reasonable price, I'd say, you know, I wouldn't think there's too much risk to it. I'd say go for it. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, uh, we've got a couple, there are two copies of this lawbreaker suspense stories, this ridiculous tongue cover. Um, <laughs> gosh, it's just, uh, yeah, this guy who cut out the people's tongues. I mean, it's just uh, such such a ridiculous cover. It is one of the most disturbing covers out there. Um, we've got the the Don Heck horrific number three, pretty crazy cover. Um, we had a nine eight Iron Man one fifty five. I'm curious how this one did. I, I don't know where this book is right now. This book had been trending up for like a decade because of Thanos in the MCU, and I feel like it's probably corrected. It's definitely, I'm sure it's definitely corrected over the last couple of years, but let's see. So this one went for 6,019 last sale, like almost a year ago was 7,360 uh, prior to the comic boom anywhere from, I mean, generally this looks like maybe like it was already trending down there. Maybe that was after the the movie. I mean, 6,000 feels about right to me. I mean, five to 6,000, somewhere in that range. And this went for 6,000. I mean, that feels about right to me. Uh, no no big shock to me on that one. Uh, I see a comment here. Uh, oh, you said, so you said they had one. So I wasn't watching it. Uh, and so I don't, that means I, I don't have it saved in my, my little preview list. So I, I don't know how that one did. Um, let's see if maybe, maybe if I can find it. It's always, like I said, it's always tricky. Uh, finding stuff in their sold listings. So let's see here. So Looney Tunes. This one. Nope, that's 2018. Like they never order it the way I want them to. 2023. 
2016, 2014, 2011, 17, 20. Here we go. Here it is. 2 0. All right. So we had a 2 0 that went for 1,381. Feels like a pretty good price. Let's see. Looney Tunes number one. Now it's one, it's in a magazine case that might have hurt it some. Like you can tell, this is definitely a magazine case. Um, it looks like it should have been able to fit in a standard. Somebody just had to fix the spine issue on it. Um, oh, was this Bobby Blue? Oh, it was a Bobby Blue book. All right, so Bobby Blue collection. So Looney Tunes number one. I didn't realize that. I didn't remember they had that in this one. So a 1.5 went for 2100. Yeah, I mean, that feels like a steal. That really does. Creamed off white pages. I, I yeah, I, I would, to me, I think whoever got that book stole that book. Uh, that That is my, uh, that is my opinion on, on that one. I think if, if I would have seen that going for that price, I 100% would have bid on it. I, I think whoever got that book stole that book. I think that was an incredible pickup. And I would probably try to get it into a standard case after that. See if I could get the, whatever's going on with the spine and that kind of thing fixed uh, to see if it could go into a standard case. But yeah. I think someone got a steal on that book. Uh, let's keep scrolling through here. I think we're, I think we're almost, almost through this, uh, through this auction. Oh, <laughs> here's one. This was one of the ones I really went after. Um, I did not win it. This is tied with two other copies as the highest graded copies of Famous Funnies number two fourteen. Uh, I was the underbidder. I know it says twenty six one, but this is before the fifteen percent is added. So. Uh, it was me and I think one other person. So I I, I don't know. Uh, let's see, it, was it Dr. Sean? Were, were you the one that said you, yeah, that, that maybe, you, yeah, you outbid me on the Fear 27? I don't know if you also were bidding against me on this one, but I thought I had won it on numerous occasions. Um, I, <laughs> I I had been bidding on this. I was bidding on this and I thought I had won it a couple times and then, you know, someone bid back on me. And I, I went above what I had wanted to bid even, and I still I still didn't get it. So this was disappointing um, to not be able to get this copy, but I just I couldn't spend any more or risk spending any more on it. Um, but this is my favorite Frank Frazetta Famous Funnies cover and tied for two others or tied with two others is the highest graded. And uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't get it. But I, I went for it. I, I, I made, I feel like I made a valiant run at it. Um, <laughs> but someone else wanted it more. So I, I didn't end up with it. This was the other one that I made a big run at. I thought, I thought I was for sure going to win this one. And again, I did not win this one. This is the Crime Suspense Stories number 17, the uh, shooting himself cover. And this, I mean, I think I doubled what the last sale was on this book. This is what I'm talking about with these, um, these gains files copies have been getting a lot of attention lately. And so this was the nine, four. Yeah. I mean, April, 2022, $3,840. This one went for 8,200 more than double in that period. Like the gains file copies really are getting a lot of attention lately. Um, and I mean, it's not even the, the highest graded one. Like I bet this, this one, this 14, four and a nine, eight. And I talked about this uh, a little bit ago, uh, in some video, maybe like six months ago or something. I think that this was one of the best buys that anybody could have made at that point. I mean, 14, four for the highest graded gains file copy of, of this book was, I mean, if you look back now, just a steal. I mean, just a, this is the black cat collection copy. I mean, just a steal for this book. Um, but yep, I missed out on it. So, oh, well, I got some other cool stuff, so it's okay. But, uh, but then here we go. I think, uh, we almost, yeah. So here's the tech 27, you know, this is the one that I think most people like knew about in this auction. So this was a, this was a, a big sale for this book. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't as high as I thought it could have gone. Uh, when I did my video on it prior to this auction, I was talking about this book. I made a video where I talked about this book and I talked about the action comics one, the 8.5. 
And now the interesting thing, and I, I don't know if it was because of my video, if, if this is why this happened or if they, they had planned it ahead of time. But when I made my video, when they first had this book posted, this book was in a different case. Um, so you can go back and watch my video and you can see it. I'm not going to pull it up, you know, pull that up now. Um, but there were, uh, scuffs all over the inner well on, if you, if you remember that video, if you've seen it all over the inner well on Batman's Cape. And so I had commented on that because I, I was like, if that's on the book, I could see this book going as low as I think I said, like 1.6 somewhere, something like that. But if it's not on the book, I could see it going as high as 1.95 million. And so they clearly got it recased in a, a case that doesn't have scuffs all over it. Like, and it's not scuffs on the outside. That's why that, that was my comment in that video that I thought it was so insane that CGC graded this book, one of the biggest books in all of comics and a very nice grade. And they put it in a case that had an inner well that was all scuffed up. <laughs> like I was just like, what are you doing? You know, like it's like a almost a two million dollar book. You know, maybe at the time it was graded, maybe it was a one million dollar book, but still one of the best books on the planet. And you can't find the cleanest case that you have, you know, <laughs> like I, I, I don't know. And uh, it, it didn't sell for less. It sold for more. Um the the bobby blue went for 32 i think um I'll, I'll confirm so we go here and so here's the 75 went for 3105 and i've got a i don't remember which page it's on i'll jump back to it so we'll find it because uh, it went for like 35. So there's that. Yeah, here it is. Went for 35,650. So it went for 4,000 more than the uh, 4,500 more or 4,600 more than the, the Bobby Blue. So uh, so yeah, it definitely did not sell for, uh, for less than the 7.5. Um, now, if you, I don't know what it went for with that, without the premium, but it, it's the final price. That's what matters. It doesn't matter what the premium is. And that, that is the final price. This is this 35, six is with that 15% buyer's premium. Um, but yeah, I mean, I thought this one could have gone as high as 19, uh, 1,009, 1,950,000 went for 1,825,000. Uh, Mickey Swaghouse Comics put a video out today or yesterday about this book. and. Uh, he, he mentioned that this is the highest number that's ever been paid for a detective comics. So it is still a significant sale. Um, if we, uh, you know, detective comics, number 27, uh, no, it always includes the 15% fee. It, it did. I, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, he bid like 27. And so, so that, that's the thing. If you here, I'll, uh, I'll, that's what can be very confusing to people on Comic Connect. So I'll, I'll make sure I, I make that clear. This price here is with the 15% premium. It does not have 15% added on after this. And that's this. And so um, when you're bidding, you know, you bid up to whatever that number is. And they don't tell, like they tell you there's 15% added, but you got to do it in your head. It's not like Heritage where they do it for you on the screen. So you got to do it in your head. You got to know what 15% is of what you're bidding on. And that's going to be added on at the end. They add it usually within about two to three minutes, maybe even a little less than that. And so if you sit there and you hit refresh over and over and over again uh, on their screen, it'll eventually jump up. So if this went for 35, 650, it, the bid was probably, I don't know, 31. It was probably 31,000 would be my guess, something like that. Uh, and so... Uh, so they actually won it with a bid of like 31,000. You had the 15% went to 35,650. So that, that, that is what it is. I'm, I'm absolutely confident of that. Um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, you know, for this one, tech 27, we, uh, you know, we go down here and we just take a look. I mean, you can see here, like the highest sale ever pr prior was this one on heritage, the six O signed by Bob Kane for 1.74 million. So this is the record 
for that book. I think Mickey also commented in his video, it's not the record for a Batman book. Uh, the record for a Batman book is held by Batman number one, but it was a significantly higher grade. So you can't really do one. I mean, Detective 27 is definitely worth more than Batman number one. Um, but there was a Batman number one that was a 9.4, you can see here, that sold for 2.22 million. So that is the record holder for a Batman comic, but for Detective Comics 27, this is currently the record holder. Um, but let's see how many, whoop, not 267. Let's see how many are actually graded higher than this book. I think, I think Mickey said something like eight. Something like that. So we've got the 6.5 here. There's six of them. Two 70s, two 75s, two 80s, 185, and 192. So there is potential definitely up there for an even bigger number to happen uh, with, with Detective Comics number 27. We seem to see it come up for sale, which would be cool. I always like seeing these big books come up for sale. They get lots of attention. Like I even saw a, uh, what was it? A New York post article about the action one that's coming up you know that that's the type of thing that really actually that's why it's cool to see some of these really big books come up is that they that's what really does get media attention and gets attention to comics and all that i think it's good for the hobby um so what kind of insurance do you get when sending high valued books in to be graded reholdered so that you know they're safe in the event something happens at cgc so when it's at cgc uh like derek says below it is covered by cgc's insurance um, when you're shipping, uh, you need to get your own insurance. Uh, the CGC does not cover you shipping. So you can either get insurance through say the post office. Uh, I would not get it through like, I don't believe like FedEx or UPS because I'm pretty sure they say that they will not insure ungraded collectibles. Uh, so if you have something that is graded, you can get it insured because there's a defined condition on that book, but ungraded, there's too much room for someone to try to uh, cheat the system and commit some type of fraud and claim damages that, that aren't actually there and all that. But uh, it, what, I, like, for example, what I have is I have, um, I can't remember what the company is. It's like collect insure. Uh, I have like a private collector's insurance. And so I, I have collector's insurance and it covers, uh, you can get different types of coverage, but one of the things it covers is shipping. And so it covers shipping to say CGC or to my presser. Uh, I have the dealer insurance. So it also covers if I'm shipping to somebody I'm selling the books to. Uh, so that is, uh, I, I highly recommend collectibles insurance to anybody that has any type of decent value in their collection where they wouldn't want to have something happen like a fire or theft or whatever that would uh, ultimately be a big financial impact to them. Like I, I would say get collector's insurance. Um, the dealer insurance is definitely more expensive, um, but it, the fact that it covers my insurance when I'm shipping to to people that buy it actually helps counteract some of that cost. So it's, it's worth it again to me to pay that. Um, but I, I recommend that to just about anybody. I, I'm pretty sure it's called collect insure, something like that. Um, now, yes, uh, I, I think actually, so the Bobby Blue collection, uh, I remember Jamie posted a video where I think he did fly down to Florida, either fl uh, pretty sure either that or he flew to New York and handed them directly to, to Vincent or something like that. But I think he flew down to Florida for the really big books, like the mask one that came back a 7.5, you know, that kind of stuff. The sensation comics one that came back, I think, a five, five, uh, I, I'm pretty sure he, he had, I remember he posted some video in like his hotel room, like the night before <laughs> that he had flown down there with those books. Cause I mean, that's hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so insurance or not, you probably don't really want to risk it. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, always cool to see books like this come up for sale. And, and that's why like these, uh, you know, the heritage stuff, um, that's why this, this big heritage auction that's coming up. I mean, I'm just excited to watch it. Like I, I'm not bidding on any of these kinds of, these kinds of books. I mean, these are way outside of my wheelhouse. Um, now this one, the eight, five has been sitting at 5 million for a while now. Now I had, I had estimated 3.5 to five for it. 
and I've talked about it a number of times and it's my personal opinion is just because I don't think it's an 8.5. <laughs> it was, it was an eight Oh, it got, you know, whatever Preston cleaned or something and, and got an 8.5. And I, I think it's an eight Oh. Um, and so, and it doesn't look as nice as the white pages eight five, like not even close as the white pages eight five that's out there. And so I, I thought that might hurt a little bit, but it seems like people don't care. You know, there's, they're, they're buying that grade. They're buying that, uh, that pedigree label and, you know, the gold label. And it's, it's probably not sticking at 5 million once it hits the live. It's possible it does, but you know, it, it seems like it's probably going to get quite a bit higher than that when it actually goes live. But I mean, just so much crazy stuff in this auction. I mean, the fact that there's a second action one, like an eight restored. Um, and you know, this type of book where if, if you haven't seen this one, like you never see this book come up for sale. Like never. This is amazing man. Comics number 22. This is this just ridiculous, like, nazi gorilla cover <laughs> so where he seems like he's kind of like punching him in the groin I, I don't know like it's it's a it's a wild cover but yeah it's sitting at six grand right now this book isn't going to sell for six grand i'll tell you that this book is going to sell for like twenty thousand. um so i mean we, we can take a take a quick look at uh pricing for that this book i mean i i think it's it's not the sky's the limit on it. I mean, it's going to, but it's the premier centaur publication, you know, like if you're into centaurs, like it's gonna, it's gonna go, it's gonna go big. And so like, look at this, like three Oh in 2019 was 19,000 uh, at 1.5 in 2019 was 12,000 most recent sale, a seven five for 69,000 in 2022. This book is going to break 20 grand. Like I have, almost no doubt in my mind <laughs> that that this book is going to break 20 grand. Uh, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's like 25 or, you know, something like that. I, I, I mean, look at, look at how often it sells. I mean, you just, you had this one sale for seven, five, and that's, that's one of the things you always have to consider with this too. Yeah. You had one sale at seven, five, and then you didn't have any other sales for five years. If you don't have a massive budget, you can't, buy this copy. You need the low grade copy. And so there's going to be a lot more competition from the, I don't know how many people actually want it. If there's like, I don't know how many, I don't know what the demand is for this centaur book, but I know there are people that want it and they're willing to spend for it. And so I think there's going to be some pretty serious competition. Like I wouldn't be shocked if it went for like 30, you know? And so I'd probably value it at like 25, but the reality is like, this is going to go for what it's going to go for because it just doesn't come up for sale, especially not in an affordable grade. And it's a decent looking 2.0. I mean, yeah, it looks like it's got a bunch of tape or something on the spine, but it's a good looking 2.0. Um, I, I think it's going to go for a pretty big number. Uh, yeah, the hamstring uppercut, <laughs> the only known defense against the uh, Nazi girl and monster. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, and even this, like, and this is, I made that video today where I was talking about the people kind of like, like jerk collectors, you know, ragging on that, the person that posted about like getting their grail book on Reddit and, you know, that people hate, you know, when people use like grail and they don't, they feel like it's not a grail to them. And I'm like, you know, there's two detective comics, 27s that have come up for sale in the last month. Does that make that not a grail? Like, it's out there. Like people, clearly it's easy to get, right. You know, there's a bunch of them available. There's two action ones in this auction. I mean, it's not a grail because it's, you know, there's two of them available. It's like, just let people buy what they like. If they say, if they say like they got their, you know, got a grail, like just congratulate them. You know, you don't need to give people a hard time about their books. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's just so much ridiculous stuff in this auction. I, I would love to be able to to get that tech 31. Where's that one? Yeah, this one. I know it's not meant to be. <laughs> this one, I don't know what this book is going to go for, um, but it's going to go for a lot more than I have. Um, so Detective Comics number 31. And it's a pretty good looking copy for a 2.5. I mean, it's sitting at 51,000. It's not going to stay at 51,000. Um, I'd probably try to make it work if it did, but I know it's not. I mean, I mean, look at this, like a 1.5 went for 66, a 2 went for 93. I mean, I think this is a hundred plus thousand dollar book. I mean, it, it really is. Um, 
I'd rather have this than a Batman one. I mean, to me, like if I, if like four Batman books, this is the book I would want the most. So, uh, I think it's the coolest, like, cause the tech 27 is never happening. I know that. So it's like, and, and honestly, like for covers, like I like this cover more than Detective Comics 27. So it's just one of those things that, uh, yeah, I think this is going to be a hundred thousand book, but, uh, yeah, it's going to be cool to see all this stuff come up for sale. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see what this stuff sells for. Um, like, I mean like this one, tech 66, highest graded first two face nine, two, I mean, a nine, eight CBCS house of secrets. Number one, uh, there was a question, uh, What's the JLA one nine six at? It is sitting currently at about one hundred and twenty thousand, uh, one hundred and seventeen thousand. Um, I don't remember what I estimated it for. I did a video about it. If you want to go back and check it, I did a video about the big Silver Age like high grade books that are in this auction, um, and I estimated some prices. And we've got this five five punch twelve. I mean, I, I know it's not going to stay at that because I would buy it at that price. <laughs> like I know it's not going for that. Uh, so we'll see what that one ends up going for. I mean, this is, this is wild. Nine, six sensation comics. Number one, that's totally crazy. What's the, is let's see one in nine, six, none higher. So it is the single highest graded copy. Um, I don't like this sticker either. Uh, pristine wartime comic find. I don't know. I don't like that sticker. I wouldn't want that on my case. Um, but I think it's gonna go for a lot more than 228,000. Um, yeah. Just so much cool stuff. So I definitely, I mean, whether you're bidding or not, I just like seeing this stuff come up for sale. I, I like, I mean, nine, eight tales of suspense 39. I, I definitely think the person that bought this, this comic link copy is, uh, uh, going to lose a lot of money. <laughs> so, uh, if you're, if you're not aware what I'm talking about, I, I think I did a video on this one too. Um, yeah, right here. It's the same book. Uh, it said it sold in September of 2023 for 2 million. It wasn't auction. So it had to have been a direct sale. Like maybe they facilitated it or something. And then it shows up on here. It's just, it's weird. I don't know. I don't like it. It's weird how this all of a sudden popped up on here. I remember somebody told me about it. I, I talked about it in that video. Um, and now it's on here. I, I think that this book is going to go for, I don't remember what I said. I talked about it in that video too. Maybe I said like a million or like, 900,000, something like that. I don't think it's going anywhere near two. Uh, I just, I don't see it. it. I don't see that value in this book. I don't see this being more valuable than Amazing Spider-Man number one at all. And we know what a 9.8 ASM one sold for. Um, it went for like 1.3. So that's going to be a big, uh, I think that's going to be a big, big loss <laughs> for whoever picked that one up. Um, it, yeah, yeah, put it on the credit card. Uh, I think I would need to increase the limit on my uh, on my credit card by quite a bit. Um, uh, and I already sold my black cat 50 in chamber of chills, 19, uh, those are gone. So, uh, they cannot be used to, uh, to purchase anything else. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll say it again, like be, be, be wary of pulps. Um, I think that there is way too much pumping going on right now with pulps. Uh, I would be extremely cautious with purchases on pulps right now. Uh, it feels very video gamey to me. And we all know what happened with the video games. The people that made money on video games were the people that sold first. And then everybody that was buying them just ate massive losses. So just, you know, I, I still think that there are cool pulps and all that. I am I'm not saying that there's no value in pulps, um, but I'm saying I would wait one to two years before I'd buy any pulp. Uh, I think there's way, way too much hype pushing these books right now. Um, I would be extremely cautious with pulps. Um, if you're buying them right now, be prepared for losses. I mean, I think in like a one to two year period. Um, I'm sure they'll they'll kind of climb maybe initially, but I'd be very, very wary of pulps. Um, do I know of any pricing tools for pricing about pulps? Really, that's part of the challenge. I feel like a lot of people are just throwing numbers out there. They're like, Hey, it's a graded pulp, $800, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so a thousand dollars, $2,000, like this kind of stuff. Uh, and 
so I, I that's part of why like i'd just be super cautious because there isn't anything really to track that right now the best option i'd say you have today really is heritage sold listings and they're not going to be graded obviously because that just started happening and so i i feel like the best option you have is heritage sold listings and maybe ignore like the last like six months where people have been like again like it started a little before the grading when all this pumping started with pulps um but that's heritage keeps their sales forever and so that that's where you know you can look those books up there you look those pulps up there that's probably the best option you have i don't know if like gpa or go collect or any of that are, are planning on pulling in that data i have no idea uh but Heritage sold listings is really probably the best option you have uh, for for historic historical data on pulp sales. Uh, but yeah, I mean, tons of cool stuff. Always Batman one. I think there's two Batman ones in this one. I think there's a two point five Universal. Here's this one point five qualified. Centerfold is married. Looks like this. I mean, this is always just so much cool stuff. I mean, there's two Cap ones. I was, I mean, there's a three O for those who, you know, the affordable copy. And then there's a nine, two, something like that. Um, yes, there, there is the bookery's price guide, but to me, that bookery price guide is the same as using like overstreet. It, you know, I, I wouldn't, I mean, I don't know if I'd really, uh, use that for, for values on, on stuff, but, um, I, I, I would, it, it's like, it's like with GPA and anything else, eBay sold listings, I would use actual sold listings. I, I wouldn't necessarily use like a price guide in, in my opinion. Uh, should you grade your pulps? I, I, I don't know. I, like I'm really not speaking to pulps too much because I, I don't know a lot about them, but I can recognize pumping on stuff when I see it. <laughs> so, so that, that, I mean, that's, that's what I, that's what I'm saying. Like I can recognize that kind of thing when I see it and that's what I'm seeing. And so that's why I'm just saying be, be cautious with it. It's it's actually surprisingly affordable to get them graded. Um, there's uh, they, they cost the same as comics, like the same as the vintage tier for comics. And then if they're higher value, you know, the same types of tiers. And so uh, I would, yeah, I mean, if you want to get them graded, go ahead, get them graded. But um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm not really all that interested in pulps right now. Uh, the only one I even really like is that that Batwoman cover, this one, and it's just been going in, insane. And so, there, I mean, like I said, I would I would wait, like I I'm, would take my own advice, <laughs> you know, like one to two years uh, before I buy any any pulp. Uh, I just I don't trust the market. Um, oh, there's a Cap Forty Six in this one. Let's see. I haven't really uh, taken a big look through. Usually, I do it like. A few days before the auction when i do like kind of like oh man a 5-0 nice so we got a 5-0 captain america 46 this is that uh the um concentration camp cover the holocaust cover um yeah that's gonna go for a lot more than 8700 it's definitely one that i'd be watching uh, that's a good looking copy too really nice colors on that copy so yep uh question here would cgc grade hardcover books and use pulp cases possibly uh I, I think that they're going to use them for manga i think that's definitely going to happen uh, i don't know when but I, I i would not be surprised at all if they they take those cases and start applying them to other types of collectibles like manga and who knows maybe hardcover books i don't know um i, I think anything where they can grade an additional collectible that there is a demand to have those types of things graded and use a like a case or whatever that they already have why wouldn't they take advantage of it now they would need to build up the infrastructure or the like the people to train for grading and all of that that would be a thing um i don't know how long that would take or not i don't know how grading of books works <laughs> i don't i don't buy i don't buy hardcover books for you know historical books first editions all that kind of thing so i can't really speak to it too much but I think I've, I've been talking a lot more than I was planning on tonight. I, I've gone over a lot of books. Uh, hopefully, you know, answered some of your questions. You know, you saw some cool stuff, got an idea about what was going on in the uh, the comic market with, with the Comic Connect sales. Uh, kind of like just to recap a little bit. I mean, the big Golden Age stuff, like the little more obscure stuff, had some really strong sales. I felt like it was a little overwhelmed with 
too many books in the upper mid value type books. I, I think there was a little too much there. Uh, and the bronze and silver, uh, that, that stuff did really well. For, like the ones that I was looking at were, I mean, yeah, some of them weren't like record say I mean, they're not record sales. I mean, 2021, 2022, we may never see those prices again, but they were solid sales. Uh, so I felt like those, uh, the, the bronze and silver, pretty, pretty strong sales in that auction, but hopefully, uh, you enjoyed this and, uh, I will, I will see you on the next one.